Trip to Ball State. Uh, we got a good win on the road in the in the MAC, which is uh, always a good thing. But uh, the game at Ball really started out well. Um, I thought for the first half we played some of our best football of the year. Uh, the offense was very sharp from the very first drive. I thought defensively in the first half we played really well. Uh, we limited the run game. We defended the pass uh, very well and we made the most of our opportunities. And we were up 24 to nothing. Uh, and then in the second half, uh, I was disappointed we didn't play better with the lead. You know, sometimes when you, when you have a lead like that, you, you take your foot off the gas. And, and I really was hoping that wouldn't happen. And uh, on defense, we missed some tackles, which allowed some breakout runs. Uh, offensively, we, we didn't convert some third downs. We dropped some balls. And as a result, Ball was able to make it a two-score game in the fourth quarter. Uh, but then we got a big stop, and our offense moved the ball a little bit, and we won the field position game. So you know, the bottom line is, is we came out with a win and uh, you know, two weeks in a row on the road in the conference. So that's uh, certainly proud of the way our guys have bounced back. And uh, Now looking ahead to, to Central, uh, this is going to be a, a great challenge for our team. And, and really, Central is a, a very complete football team. Any time that you can lead the conference in scoring offense and the conference in scoring defense tells you you're, you're you know this is a complete football team we're playing. Um, they've got great talent on both sides of the football. Uh, obviously on, on offense, it starts with their quarterback, but their offensive line is very well coached. Uh, they have tremendous skill. You know they're really three and four deep at receiver. They've got good running backs, good tight ends. Uh, the challenge with them offensively is they spread the whole field. That They make you defend every single gap in the run game. Uh, they, they run some perimeter runs uh, with some sweeps with, uh, with Brown. Uh, their quarterback is a threat to be an inside runner and a perimeter runner. They run the inside zone play. They run a lot of what we call dummy schemes that the whole line will block one way and the run will be the other. And, and it's, it's really a, a neat way of running misdirection run. And because of who they do it with, it, it works so well. Both the quarterback and Brown are, are outstanding at it. Um, you know, the defensively, they're, they're very well coached. They're a team that can play their base defense well. Uh, what you have there is a unit that has struggled, and they have 10 starters back uh, from a unit that gave up 30 points a game last year. And now they're leading the conference in scoring defense. So I, I think that's a real compliment, not only to their coaching staff, but their players that those guys have obviously worked hard. They understand the defense well. And uh, those guys have improved not only individually, but collectively to, to really be playing good team defense now. And, and they're very dangerous in the kicking game. And, and a lot of it is, is their return game. But anytime 27 gets his hands on the ball, uh, some of the things that he does in the punt return game and the kick return game, um, I mean, it's scary. Uh, so this is a very complete football team we're playing. Uh, this will be a, a great challenge for our guys, but uh, we're in late October and we're still playing for something, and, and we want to keep that going. Coach, there been some attitude that you can play for the running quarterback like that. Well, you know, any, any time that you you face a, a running quarterback, uh, and you know, we faced a couple of them. Uh, Missouri certainly did a little bit of it. Um, Ohio with their option game, he was a threat to run. Um, you know, it just it really forces you to play assignment football. And, uh, you know, they give the ball enough to their running backs, they give it enough to uh, Brown on the, on the sweep series that, again, it almost comes back to being triple option football. Uh, that on every time they run the ball, you've got to account for uh, the zone game with the running back, which is really the dive, uh, the quarterback aspect of it. Uh, which is Lefevre, and then they don't run a lot of option. They run a little bit of option, but because of the different packages they run and the motions they run, you know, Brown almost becomes the option phase of their run game. And uh, so they've got three dynamic playmakers that on every snap of the football you, you have to account for. And uh, it forces you to, to keep your hat in the right gap. Uh, it forces guys to play assignment football, and, and you have to tackle well because you cannot assign two and three people. You can't say, hey, three people are going to take Lefebvre. I mean, he's not only the, the leader in passing efficiency in the conference, but he's their leading rusher. And you say, well, just don't let him beat you. Well, it's, it's not like those other guys can't beat you either. You've seen a lot of great quarterbacks, um, you know, in your career, I mean, especially the last couple of years. Is Lefebvre, I know you haven't seen him in person, but on film, is he one of the best in the country? Yes. 
clearly. I mean, just can beat you in, in all ways. And the other thing he does extremely well is there's a lot of plays that are well defended. You know, there, there were times that uh, teams have completely unblocked guys in the backfield on a third and six, third and seven, and he scrambles and gets 12 yards. I mean, you know, th there's times that the defensive call is good. Everybody does their job. You just, it's, it's hard to tackle. I mean, he's such a physical presence. Uh, he's deceptively fast. Uh, you know, I'm sure he doesn't run as well as some of the guys trying to tackle him, but he always seems to be able to make a miss or outrun him. And he's so big, he's always finishing forward. You know, so whenever you make contact, there's going to be two or three more yards that he gets. Uh, and so, you know, last year I, I saw Tim Tebow live, and you know, with the numbers that he's putting up, it's an inevitable comparison that uh, this is cer certainly the max version of Tim Tebow. How about your uh, offensive line with uh, the injuries of both uh, Ben and uh, Brady out there? Uh, right now, it looks like that. You know, we're not uh, with, with Ben. You know, he, he's probably definitely out with Brady. Uh, we're pretty sure he's out too. You know, and, uh, barring some quick recovery, uh, we'll be down those two. And uh, you had mentioned, I think, on the radio show that Steffi seemed to be the natural guy to go to center because of his experience and everything. Uh -huh. Do you just talk about that uh, process? And he's left handed. Yeah, I'm so too. excited people listen to the radio show. <laughs> That's great. That should be great for our advertisers, isn't it? It's a great way to promote product. Uh, Did I say that? No, it was great. Where's you said check? you listened to the radio show. Where's my check? <laughs> but uh, did it matter that he's left-handed the same as Ben? I, I think, you know what, that's a uh, kind of a, an ironic thing, but it kind of helps you because the, uh, the snap rotation is the same in terms of uh, the quarterback getting his ball in the laces the same way, the rotation of the shotgun snap. Uh, we're fortunate, but... You know, a lot of the move, uh, moving Shane uh, to center is, is really twofold. Number one, you know, he's our most experienced interior lineman. He's played a lot of games, and the center is really the guy that's got to make all the communication, all the calls, uh, where the, the slide goes to in the protection schemes. And, and Shane has more experience being involved with that communication than anybody else we have. And, and really our next best lineman is Scott Lewis, who's much better equipped to play guard than center. Uh, so all year... Uh, we've been working Shane as the backup center, um, and if we even had a rotation and wanted to give Ben a breather, the plan was always to put Scott at guard and move Shane to center. So, you know, we've repped it, we've, we've practiced this way all year, um, you know, and I have a lot of confidence in, in Scott Lewis as I do Blake Walker. Uh, the, those Bl Blake stepped in for Brady on Saturday and played really well. And, uh, you know, we've been talking all year about trying to get him a series, and we've been able to do that now and then. And, you know, I think that is he going to play well? Yes. You know, the, the key is he's never had to play 60, 70, 80, 90 plays before. And, and that's, you just, you know, you, you need them to hold up not only physically but mentally for whatever it takes. And, and with Lewis, uh, 